Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to 10 Count. I'm Steve Hall, but on today's edition, I am talking to the reigning and defending X Division champion. It's Trey Miguel. How are you doing today? I'm doing good today. I'm doing good. Got some good sleep last night. <laughs> good. Good. I have three kids, so I haven't slept in uh, like seven years. But we're not talking about me. We're talking about you and your awesome Halloween shirt. But no, Impact Wrestling has an event coming up. Sacrifice, March 24th. Originally... Santina Morella was kind of playing games with you about your opponent, but it was announced on Twitter. Lince Dorado is going to take, see if he can take you down. Try to get that belt. How are you feeling about this? First off, you didn't know who you were taking on. And now, you know, and it's only a few days away. It feels a little unfair. I found out during yesterday's interviews who I had. I had no idea. I didn't see the Twitter post. So it's fresh news to me. It's always fun when I find out something through a third party source. Um, Lince is a good friend of mine. He's a very fun human being. Awesome wrestler. I'm going to kick his ass, though. Um, I plan on throwing like a bunch of banana peels in the ring because he likes to do all this running and flipping and stuff. So uh, I've been playing a lot of Mario Kart. And I realize the faster they go, the more they spin when you throw that banana peel. So... Uh, I'm going to catch him lacking. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> now, it sounds like you need to bring one of those giant green turtle shells and just whip it at him. And you see one. what happens. The, the blue one is a definite because it has the wings. It finds whoever's in first. So the second he thinks he's ahead, I'm throwing that blue shell at him. Well, the electric bolt that makes him really small. Yes. Yep. Yep. I think, how do you defeat someone who's this you big? You are well versed in your Mario Kart, sir. I love it. <laughs> Listen, come on. I, 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 we might be I around. Like everyone needs to be, though. If you didn't play Mario Kart, then what were you doing as a child? Right. Well, if you if you don't know what this means to get a video game to work, then you're not, you're not from my world. You're nope. you're you're much older than me. You're probably on some new social media site that I've never heard of. And yeah. uh, I don't want to be part of that world. I want to be part what, of the world where. What was where... that one that took off a little bit ago that everyone was on? Uh, I oh, even what... hopped on. Oh, everyone thought Twitter was going to collapse one night, and they joined the Hive. I believe the it was. Hive. That's what it was. I haven't yeah. checked that thing since like three days after making it. it no one, seem... no one did because it actually crashed and burned because it couldn't handle the amount of people joining all at once, and that's a bad, poor business plan to allow this to happen. But you know, it's not a bad business plan. New Japan versus Impact. March yes. 30th, Multiverse United. Again, if you pass through, pardon my French, when you pass when, through Linz when. at Sacrifice, March 30th, it's, again, it feels a little unfair. Let, let's run down this, this, this opponent. Rich Swan, a former Impact World Champion. Frankie Gazzari, and a man who's on everything underneath the sun. Kevin Knight, Clark Connors, and Rocky Romero. Hello, this is the who's who's of wrestlers right now, and they're all trying to go for your gold. Uh, how you feel about this? How you preparing? So when you're in a multi-man match and you're the champion going into it, everyone feels like the target's on you. But it really isn't because it doesn't take me being pinned for anyone to to win the match. Mm -hmm. So Frankie Kazarian could pin Rich Swan and be the new Impact X Division champion. So there's not so much of a target to take me out. There's there's wide focus on everyone that's out there. So I don't feel this target that's on me. And Personally, multi-man matches are my favorite to perform in, so I feel really comfortable going into this match, and I feel like I may even have a sort of advantage, if that makes sense. It's not my home turf or anything like that, but mm. I'm not afraid. I feel good. And this event has so many uh, implications with so many different organizations because I did see recently uh, from New Japan, the IWGP Women's Champion Mercedes Monet has challenged Mickey James. She wants to put yes. her back on the last rodeo. And uh, now... This is the is that official? Have they made that? No, 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 this, no, no, no. But I, but since we're talking about the multiverse United, Mickey James, Impact Wrestling, yeah. Mercedes, New Japan, is there a world, a multiverse that this could happen in? I think that it could happen this this loop if someone just signs the dotted line. That would be insane. I've been seeing the the back and forth on Twitter and just waiting to see the first person that makes it official. I was hoping that we would do it for multiverse. Well, Scott Demore, if you are listening and watching, which I know you are, of course, you need to get this signed because Multiverse of Universe, the, the United has so many matches already on the card. Let's just let's just add some more. Let's add some yeah. more. Let's set up what we're going for. Let's break the internet together with Impact and New Japan working together. I I, I think this needs to happen. I think this needs to happen. I think it will happen. I don't think it's a matter of if, just a matter of when. Right. And then also with your exhibition champion, Chip, last month at No Surrender, you didn't even defend your gold on that card. 
Now, how do you feel about the exhibition championship? Because in reality, it's not a secondary championship. No, it, no. It, it, there's no like world title then underneath it. They're on the same wavelength. And is there respect towards the exhibition championship as much as the world title? You feel like? I feel like there isn't when there should be because. To me, I feel like the X Division is the sort of the foundation of the style that people crave out of wrestling these days Mm. or what you see most of. Young talent coming in, doing some of the craziest stuff you've ever seen, risking their bodies more than anyone. Um, Indie wrestling is my favorite to watch. People that are hungry to get on TV do the most wild stuff in the world. And I would like to believe that the X Division is sort of what started that movement and to... Have the X Division Championship, which represents this entire style of wrestling that is so heavily sought after and people want to hone in. That's the coolest thing in the world to me. The X Division Championship is my favorite belt in all of wrestling. So to have it, it, it's it's really, really surreal. So I hold the X Division Championship on the biggest pedestal. I'm sorry, it sounds like there's a bird in my room. I think the bird has has emptied your room, and I don't know where it is, but that, I think you me... You hear that squeaking? I think me asking you questions isn't as good as you searching for a bird somewhere in your room right now with a baseball bat. I will, I will <laughs> take this entire... I'll, I'll take the phone with me, and we'll go on a journey. We'll get to this. I, I do hear it too much. I thought it was funny. I was like, is there a, like a small mouse? Is there a bird in there? There is something in here. I don't know. But you I bring mean, up the X Division Championship as well, because if you go back in the day when it was NWA TNA, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., $10 pay-per-views where I started watching TNA, um, now Impact Wrestling, of course. You know, you AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, uh, Low Key, Frankie Kazarian. They were, they were the names that were putting TNA, Impact Wrestling, on the map. Yeah, you had heavyweights. Yeah, you had former talent show up in there. But it was the X Division that made everything go, oh, my God. You know, these other companies are doing something. But Impact, this is completely different. That I This is something I want to see more of. And, of course, the X Division created so many matches, the Ultimate X is something that I think is one of those situations where you're like, I'm sorry, you want to do what? And then I and then they do it. I believe I've been in three, maybe four of them now, and that's three or four too many times. Now, <laughs> what's, the dif- what's the difficulty um, of that match? It's just... The concept of it is crazy. To scale this rope, a tight rope that is in the middle of the ring, X amount of feet, I believe it's like eight or eight or nine feet higher than the top rope. And then when you're up there and all these lights are just a few feet further and you look down and everyone looks so small, you're winded every time you go up there. You know, you probably just took four or five moves, gave two yourself, and now you got to muster up the strength to make your monkey bar way to the middle of the ring. And then the scariest part for me is yanking the belt. I never want to be up there trying to get this thing down and have it just not go. That's the last thing in the world I ever want yeah. to happen. And I think my biggest fear about going into that match, but I get more comfortable every time we do it. The first time I did it, it was nerve wracking. Um, I remember Rich Swan and myself just being freaked out, looking up at it from the floor. And then the moment we got to the back after it, we both hugged the ground because we were so happy to still be walking. It was, it's, um, <laughs> It's unique. It is very unique. But it's one of those things that I never considered some of the stuff that pro wrestling offers when I got into it. Like, I never thought about the cage matches or the ladder matches or anything like that. So once it gets presented, it's like, oh, how did I never think about this? Like, this might be a thing I have to do one day. I probably should have spent more time hyping myself up for some of these opportunities. But you you just in love with wrestling as it as it is. So True. Uh, when when I found out I was doing it, I had a knot in my throat. <laughs> I I think video games, wrestling video games alone gave the perspective that anything is possible. Once you start being like, oh, wait a minute, there's 55 different pile drivers? I <laughs> never knew that was a thing. And then you start yep. playing and you're like, oh my God, you could do a backflip, a front flip, sideways, uh, grab the trunks, hold them by the little feet, the legs. I think with wrestling, the it's endless possibilities of being inventive and you just got to think of out of the box situations like King of the Mountain is a good example of kind of a reverse ladder match. But you bring up climbing up at X Division, uh, Ultimate X, and trying to get that. And no matter, say that match was 30 minutes. So you did the craziest thing in the world. All everyone would think about is, why can't Trey pull that belt down, down yeah. from the top? And one of the things that made it so um like nerve-wracking is you know you try to get yourself prepared and you watch 
older X division matches, yeah. the way that those guys went into those matches was so wild to me. Some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen in my life, like um, Kazarian with the flying leg drop. Nope. I don't think I want to take that. I don't. Um, People have done flips. AJ, AJ took like the, like a flipping shooter bump off of it one yeah. time. Just, how do you, how do you go in there and try to up these guys? Because you have to try. Otherwise this match isn't going to stand anywhere near it. So true. You got to get creative and you got to get a little dangerous out there. And that's where it becomes a little scary, but yes. Also a little scary is traveling around the world. And I know you do that. And recently you were in Germany competing in one of the biggest wrestling companies in Europe. Uh, what was that experience like? And do you think you go back a few years ago, impact was traveling to Europe. It felt like every other day in the, great business, great money on the table. Do you think yeah. impact wrestling can go back and maybe go work with these other companies in Europe and you have new Japan versus impact? Why not WXW versus impact sure. wrestling? I hope it's a thing that comes to fruition. The first time impact ever reached out to me, or it was the second time. Um, it was to do work in the UK. Des, Zach, and myself, we were just wrapping up a tour with Fight Club Pro, and we were flying out the next day. But the day after that was when the Impact Talent was making it in. So I got a message asking if I would still be there, and if so, would I like to work? And it just crushed me that I was leaving, and there was nothing I could do about it to rearrange those flights. But I would love to go over there under the uh, Impact Wrestling umbrella. That would be super cool. I think everyone in the locker room would enjoy that. We kind of frequent the same cities right now, so... Things are a little too familiar. I like to switch stuff up, see something new, get a little confused, try to translate some stuff. And um, that trip to WXW in Germany was hands down my favorite international tour I've ever done. Uh, I did it alone, which was a little weird. Normally we do it as a group, myself and other rascals, but the people over there just were so friendly. They were so welcoming. The crowd was amazing. And that venue was packed to the freaking wall to wall. It was seriously so breathtaking. And it's one of those things that I never thought I would get to do. It's just such a very prestigious tournament, and I just don't look at myself that way. I look at myself like the the kid that grew up that went to a regular elementary school, went to a regular junior high, a regular high school, worked regular jobs. That's just how I see myself. So to take a deep breath in, standing in that arena, I cried um, wow. in Germany on the day of. Yep, I let like maybe I let three go. I had a so soak it up afterwards. Yeah, get back get in there, there tear. Yeah. I thought this guy's a professional. What a what a baby. What a baby. It, it, it really meant a lot though. And it's the first tour and country that I've ever left with such a heavy heart. I cried on the way home. I didn't want to leave. I made so many friends and I missed them the second I got to the airport. And when I got on Instagram, everyone was posting the same thing. Like we have post 16 karat depression. That was very real. That it was just such an atmosphere that I don't think many people can recreate and i am now craving it i want to go back so bad i think impact wrestling europe you know let's let's go for it and you know you brought up impact going to certain locations which i absolutely love because you know it's a smart business decision if you're doing well and want to market go to that market you'll do well in business but boston hello i'm from boston and i haven't seen an impact pay-per-view since slammiversary 2013 with bully ray versus thing is the main event Great. Exhibition champion. Can you pull some strings with the uh, Scott Demore and Gail Kim and backstage and, and get me a, an I impact being so pay-per-view? Honest with you, I am being so honest with you. I am the last person in line to get to pull strings at impact right now. I promise that's the truth. No way. Right. I will get no favors done. That's right. I Come cause on. too much trouble. Come on. Let's I cause too much trouble. Help, help me out. I help you. Yeah. You help me. I'm a rascal, man. They look at me like my child. They're like, <laughs> How are we? we're paying him. We really are. All right. How much? Like, this guy? No. Just... <laughs> You're the exhibition <laughs> champion. Hello. He has one of our championships. Well, someone's got to get that off. <laughs> well, let's let's not hope that happens at Sacrifice on uh, March 24th or happens March 30th at Multiverse United. But it, the Impact also did announce it's going to be a live pre-show before multiverse united and i think impact wrestling going live in my brain more often is just for me i think would be outstanding i don't know i don't know you know taped is great and i love the atmosphere i love the matches but like when you're live if you slip and fall banana peel like you're gonna do to lince dorado well it's gonna happen live on tv if it happens tape you can just remove that yeah that's true i think going live brings a little bit more out of everyone because of that exact reason there's no okay, we can fix this in post or we can redo this or no, we're live. People want to see things live too. I think that's, that would draw more people 
to show up to the live events, I believe. I remember the first time I went to a live tape or a live show that was airing on TV. It was Saturday night's main event. I was maybe 10 years old and it was up in the Kobo Arena in Detroit. I was so excited about the idea of being somewhere that is being live streamed everywhere on TV. That was so, it made it feel so much cooler to me. And then you you wonder and hope that maybe the camera will land on you and your people will see you back at home. I think that would draw people to come to the shows more. And it would it would save a lot of face for it too because the spoilers ruin everything. The people that show up to the shows, they immediately leak videos or leak photos and give the results away. And once you see that, there's really, it's like a football game. If you miss the football game and you know who won or lost, are you ever going to go back and watch that game? For, no one watches old sports, football. sports, no. no. No one watches old football, but people do watch old wrestling all the time. Yes, yeah, and that's, I think it's a little different. You know, I mean, we can't, apples and oranges, although right. you can compare fruit. Um, shout out Lil Dicky. Um, there is just something that's a little different about seeing it live and knowing that it's being broadcasted everywhere in the world. As yeah. you are saying it, I think that's special. Of course. And now with all these events coming up, there's so much happening in the Impact Wrestling. Um, one final question, though. As you mentioned a few times, you've traveled around with the Rascals. Is there a scenario in the multiverse that we could see not one, not two, not three, but possibly all members of the Rascals back together in Impact Wrestling for a reunion of some sort get back in the treehouse? If I'm being... If I'm correct, I don't think we've ever been complete as four on a single card. Wow. We've never been put all four of us together. That's insane. It's always just been Des, Zach, and myself, and then Myron will get a singles match, or Zach and I, Des and Myron. It's just, it's always been broken up in some sort of weird facet. We've never been all four of us. So the first time, or the next time it happens will be the first time. Well, and it's really weird to think that that has not happened yet. It's been so long that we've been the Rascals. It's been since 2018. Wow. Not one match, all four of us. That's it's really wild. And I, well, I don't think I've ever thought about that until this moment. That's really crazy. And that's what I'm here to do. Titillate your brain and get the thoughts out. But I got to say, it's been a pleasure talking to the reigning and defending X Division champion, Trey Miguel. I can check you off my bucket list of Impact Let's Wrestling go. interviews because it was a pleasure as always. And again, sacrifice March 24th, March 30th. We have Multiverse United, New Japan vs. Impact. What will happen? Who will show up? Who won't show up? I don't know, but you need to tune in and watch it. But I've been Steve Fall. He's been Trey Miguel. This has been 10 Count. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. Peace, peace, peace.